Hello book besties! Welcome to another weekly reading vlog. I'm so excited to be back and vlogging and hanging out with you guys for another week. Like I said, I actually took last week off because it was just a very heavy work week. Usually the end of the month over on Patreon is a lot. There's a lot going on with graphics that need to be made or book club picks, readathons, movie nights. There's just so much going on at the end of the month. So I just needed a break because I knew I couldn't focus or even think about vlogging. And also my full-time work job is really picking up. So I feel like these weekly vlogs will probably end up getting shorter and shorter over time. But today is Friday, so we're in a good mood. It is now the weekend. I just finished filming my April TBR, which if you don't already know, I work from home on Fridays. I also only work half days. So as soon as I finish my work over here, I'm basically jumping straight into filming over here. But I actually have to jump straight into editing this video because this weekend is also Easter weekend and I do have plans on Sunday. I am planning to go to church, of course, and then I'm going to go to my family's house for lunch. This week is a very busy week, but it's also a week that I really need to cram. We're just going to call this cramming at the end of the month. My friend Jan Agaton always does like these end of the month cramming vlogs where she's finishing up books and all of that good stuff. So I'm just going to take that term and call this a cramming slash reset vlog for the month because I cannot believe Monday is already April. I haven't set up my reading journal yet. I need to organize my TBR card, but I'm just going to talk you guys through what I'm planning to read this week. I have been sitting on Fate Inked and Blood since I talked to you guys last and I took a week off of filming. I will be finishing this today, mark my words. I actually only have 50 pages left and I'm still feeling that four, five, maybe four and a half star feeling, but this is the main priority. I have to finish a book this week, you guys. I'm driving myself crazy. I'm ready to move on because I'm also still reading The Clinic by Kate Quinn that I've been reading for Kendall's book club and I'm just ready for this book to be over. <laughs> It's a three star. I'm not hating it, but there is a lot of dark kind of hard topics of drugs and addiction. I just don't care about any of these people. I don't really care how it ends. Another book that I need to start is my book club pick for March on my Patreon. We are reading A Tempest of Tea. The discussion isn't until April 11th, but I feel like in order for me to feel better about myself and not completely procrastinate, I would like to get to maybe the 100 page mark. Mark. But then I finally got the audiobook for Sarah Adams' Practice Makes Perfect from the library. So I'm very tempted to ditch all of that and read this. And the next book that I've had my eye on that I finally was able to find in the store because I can't find it anywhere is this little graphic novel about a teen who I believe has multiple personality disorder. But I love the artwork in this. It looks really short and I've never seen it in stores. So I finally grabbed it. But anywho, this is my plans for the week which is very ambitious. I'm definitely planning to only finish these first two at least and be able to give you some thoughts on them. So without further rambling, I am going to go ahead and just dive right into my long editing session. I've got my coffee ready to go. I might go grab an Alani new. I always have an Alani on hand, but for whatever reason, I don't have one and it's just been a really long week. <laughs> I have kind of been in a bad mood. I don't want to say bad, bad mood or depressed, but I just feel like it's been a blah week. Like no matter what I'm doing or who I'm talking to, I just feel blah. I'm just in a mood and I need to get out of that funk this weekend. I'm hoping to sit outside and just get some sunshine and just enjoy and celebrate Easter. So I'm hoping this weekend will put me in a better mood. I honestly feel like not being able to read much has contributed to my mood immensely because I have not been able to read or game or just do anything that I really want to. It's been very heavy on the workload this week. So we're gonna set aside some time for some self care, some reset for the month and and I will probably talk to you guys tomorrow. Hello besties, welcome to 
Oh gosh, I'm gonna sneeze again. Let's do that again. Hello besties, welcome to Saturday. If you can or cannot tell, my eyes are very swollen. I've been sneezing since the moment I woke up and have not stopped. So it's probably not a good idea for me to be going out today, but we're doing it anyway. We're doing it for our mental health because I do not get out that often. I mean, I do, I do have a choice, but I never go to my library. So we're gonna go to the library today because I did not get any reading done yesterday at all. So we have a lot of reading and catching up to do, but the main reason I'm going over there is because I have had a bag of old arcs for a really long time and I don't have a little free library really close to me. So I thought it would probably be a good idea to just go to my library and see if they will take some of these. So I'm going to go ahead and show you what I have just in case you're interested for whatever reason, but I have this new arc Annie LeBlanc is not dead yet. It comes out in June. Honestly, it's just not something I'm interested in right now, so I am going to see if they'll take this one. I have a horror novella called The Salt Girls Heavy, which I think even has a different cover now. I don't know. I am not really interested in this one because it's horror, even though it's short. It has been out a while. I also have Pet, which is a middle grade that I got forever ago, and I've heard great things about. It just doesn't really sound like my vibe. I usually like more fantasy. I have How High We Go in the Dark, which is a sci-fi that I've heard people compare to Station Eleven, which I didn't really like. So I think I'm going to be passing on this one. I also have Winterwood by Shay Earnshaw, which honestly I debated keeping, but this is one of the first arcs I'd ever received from a publisher. So the only reason I was holding on to this is because of that reason. Just for the nostalgia, like, hey, I made it in the book world, but honestly, I don't know about Shay Earnshaw. I've liked some of her books and I haven't liked some others because I DNF'd them. So I think I'm just going to pass this one on as well. I also have Seanan McGuire's Seasonal Fears. Didn't really like Middle Game. Didn't ask to get a copy of this, so I don't even know how I ended up with it. I love Seanan McGuire, but Middle Game was just not for me. I also have Little Eve by Catriona Ward. I've heard this one is kind of cultish and really dark, and honestly, that's just not my vibe. We are cozy fantasy readers and cute romance readers over here, and honestly, I just feel like The Last House on Needless Street was like a one-hit wonder for me with this author, so I don't think I'm going to read this one. I also have Last to Leave the Room by Caitlin Sterling, which is by the author of The Death of Jane Lawrence, which I actually liked it. It was a slow gothic book, but this one, I don't know. It sounds good about like doppelgangers or something, but I don't know. I haven't heard much about it. And I also have Where Dreams Descend, which I do own the actual hardback copy of now, so I don't need this one, even though this is like such an amazing arc. It's one of the first that I ever got as well. So it's very near and dear to my heart. I actually can't wait to read this series. I think I'm really gonna like it, but I just don't need to keep it. So we're gonna go to the library for that reason. Luckily, my library is literally three minutes around the corner. Like, it's so close, but I never go. It's very small. It makes me very nostalgic for my library when I grew up. The downtown library that I have is so much better, but it's like 35 minutes away and we're not gonna go there today. That being said, let's go ahead and go to the library. I do have to go to the grocery store afterwards because we're gonna make some brownies for Easter. We're just gonna make today a great day. My husband and I also have some nightstand, like bedside tables coming today, which I'm really excited for because we have had these tall lamps that also double as like shelves and we knock them over all the time because they're lightweight and it's just really inconvenient if you have like an open cup or an open drink. And we're just so excited to be real adults and put together some nightstands today. So that will be another project for later. So that's what we're doing. I've also got my blue slush Alani today to put a little pep in my step, but let's go to the library and I will show you around my cute little tiny library.
to a little vloggy vlog update. Today is now Tuesday and I feel like a terrible weekly vlogger because I don't think I caught up with you guys after I left the library. Basically this weekend was super chaotic, all good things, but I also felt like garbage. I probably mentioned at least once or twice that my allergies were horrendous and when I tell you I crashed Easter night, I crashed hard. Like I don't even remember falling asleep. But let me just back up and catch you up a little bit on my reading because I finished three books, which is so happy. I'm so thankful that I now have those books behind me, not because they were bad books, but I had just been reading them for like two weeks and I was so over them. I was able to get rid of those arcs that I had, thank goodness, because they were just taking up way too much room. When I walked up, the librarian was like, oh my gosh, these are amazing. Like someone's gonna love these. And he was like, are you a book reviewer? And I was like, yeah, I've actually been doing it for a couple of years and I really enjoy it and me being the introverted person I am didn't even give him my YouTube handle or Instagram or anything not that I'm all about marketing myself but like I was so insecure that I was just like yeah bye like I'm gonna go look at the books now I don't know if anyone else is like that I should have felt fully safe and comfortable in a library of all places but honestly I hadn't been in a library in so long and I really want to become a regular at this library because I live 0.3 miles away not even half a mile and the people in there were super young super fun but they were just like super grateful for the books so now I know that your library will take arcs I was able to finish Fate Inked and Blood on Saturday Saturday and then Sunday of course was Easter and I actually visited my friend Kendall's church and it was really good It's very close to us And then after that we went to my parents house where there's some extended family and just had a really good meal and spent so much time outside Which also messed with my allergies even though it was nice and I enjoyed hiding those eggs for my younger cousins and sisters So like I said, I have finished three books since I've talked to you guys and I actually sat in the library and finished a fate inked in blood I only had about about 50 pages left and I will say I think I'm gonna land on a four star with this one which is kind of a plot twist for me I was wholeheartedly going into this having that five star feeling and at first I thought it was because I had set it down for other reasons for book clubs or whatever but I don't think that was the case because by the end it was actually pretty predictable which isn't necessarily a bad thing like it's not like I'm over here reading a mystery thriller but I just wanted a little more oomph like it started off so fast and so good and so incredible like so much was happening it was whiplash you're getting introduced to all these characters and the magic which is another thing that I didn't quite grasp the whole shield maiden gods thing I know that's like a Norse mythology Viking kind of theme but I don't think I've watched or read enough of that to really be able to fully picture what was happening so that was kind of a struggle for me but I will say I feel like these characters got together pretty quickly and there was like three full chapters of spice and I was not expecting that at all like I'm all for that if that's your jam but for me I could have had it toned down just a little bit and I would have been much happier and that didn't necessarily affect my rating overall but I was just hoping for a little bit more of a slow burn knowing that this is at least going to be a duology but the writing and the pace throughout the book was phenomenal it was perfect I can see why the bridge kingdom is a series that is so loved I actually went and purchased that on Amazon right after I finished this because I feel like that series being more YA I believe might be more my jam. I could be wrong so don't quote me on if it's young adult but I have heard people just blazing through that series. I think it's only a duology. I really 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 did love this one. Like I said the first half was phenomenal, amazing. If you have the chance to listen to the audio the accents are super cool and now I just want to go watch the show Vikings. So I think I'm going to land on a four star with this one. I think it's probably going to end up on like my favorites of the year but I don't know yet I don't know I'm still like processing how I feel I also finished the clinic which I did not have much left of either maybe like a hundred pages or so and I think I'm gonna give this one two stars and that's not necessarily because it was a bad book this just felt very mediocre and very beginner thriller type of vibes first of all when a thriller is 430 pages I feel like that's pushing it I mean that's the length of a fantasy book like this book right here was shorter than this one this just drug a lot and I also wasn't a huge fan of the alcohol and drug talk that was like 
non-stop. I understand that these characters are at a facility and I understand this author was writing from experience herself but I just feel like a lot of the plot and being able to relate to the characters just really got lost because of that. Again, I know that's a personal preference and I should have expected that going in. I've read the synopsis a million times so I don't know what I was expecting from this. I think the cover was just really giving me other vibes that I wanted and I honestly didn't even care about the sister dynamic because essentially you have this sister who is going undercover into this clinic because her sister who is a very popular celebrity I think she was like a country singer or something actually died and she is trying to figure out who her killer is and honestly I just didn't care about either of them the side characters there's nothing special I really don't know I didn't mind the turnout or the plot twist but I have seen things like that before so unfortunately I felt like this was subpar for me I usually don't give out anything less than a three I don't know if it was just because it was too basic and I was overthinking everything or over analyzing too much when I shouldn't have that's another thing that I personally have with thrillers is I'm always trying to be the investigator and I think that's where I went wrong with this one and the last thing that I think I talked about at the beginning of this video that I decided to pick up on a whim is the L or L's graphic novel the new girl this is volume one this is just such a stunning graphic novel I just love the lighting that the illustrator used and the way that they told this story by changing the hair color was honestly kind of genius so basically we have Elle who moves to this new school and she has a record of just not really getting along with people and losing her friends until this one girl who I can't remember her name is at the school she befriends Elle and tries to learn more about her and Elle opens up about who she is as a person not necessarily that she has a multiple personality disorder because that's never actually said but it definitely is assumed and there was actually a plot twist at the end of this that I was like okay I was not expecting that I feel like this book is kind of hard to explain but if you're wanting more of a character study versus like a super plot driven graphic novel I feel like this would be the way to go and I actually rated it five stars because I thought it was good representation I feel like this is a really unique voice and a really unique way to share more about this so I thought this was just really a fun and unique graphic novel okay sit if you see a dog running around in the background, that's Quinn. We have a little visitor, but I did just want to say I'm finally going to dive into A Tempest of Tea. I was thinking about reading a fun romance book or something like that. I was like, you know, I should probably play it smart and finally get to my book club read. But I finally found the time to sit down and set up my reading journal for the month of April. So we're going to do that together. Finally get my TBR cart organized for spring and for the month. And then I need to go pick up my Walmart grocery order. And I thought it would be fun to share with you guys some staples that I typically pick up. I definitely have not meal planned well this week, but I personally love grocery hauls. I like to get food ideas from people and snack ideas, whatever it is. So I'll show you a little bit of what I pick up. Let's just go ahead and get this reading journal set up because it is about time. <music>
Hello book besties, welcome to Wednesday. I am about to jump onto my weekly Patreon sprints, but I have a bunch of really fun book mail that I've gotten in the past two to three days that I keep forgetting to share with you. And I also have a reading update on A Tempest of Tea. I'm only 11 chapters in, I'm on page 98, so basically 100 pages. And this is different than I thought it was gonna be, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. I think the biggest thing that's caught me off guard is the fact that there's actually very little vampires in this so far and it's a very slow burn. It's taken us a while to get a lot of background on these characters and actually feel for them. Essentially we have Arthi and Jin that are kind of like partners or friends. There's definitely no romantic feelings involved but Jin's house went up in flames and I think it killed his family as well from what I remember and Arthi was the one that found him as a child. They kind of like ran away and Arthi kind of like saved him. So I guess her family kind of took him under their wings now they're grown up and they own this tea shop by day i don't even know what the word is blood shop by night but then they learn that the person that's paying for their rent that gets part of the profit is no longer going to be able to pay but they somehow get involved in this heist where they have to steal this ledger to be able to give that to the person that's paying rent and that way they can keep their shop so that's kind of where i left off i'm not getting a five star feeling up front and it's a little bit jarring at first to try to understand the world. It's very like Victorian kind of Six of Crows vibes. We're definitely not getting like romantic or anything like that, but it's okay so far. I think I need to get a little bit further to be able to make a call on it, but I'm not hating it, so that's good. But I've gotten some very exciting mail from publishers I thought I would share with you because I feel like this is the only place that I share books from publishers nowadays because I'm just terrible at posting on Bookstagram. But the first one I could not believe my jaw dropped when I open this is A Letter to the Luminous Deep. Once again, this is the Orbit Fantasy, and I don't know how I got on this list, but I'm very, very thankful because this is one of my most anticipated reads. Dive into the curious correspondences of Sylvie Catherall's delightful debut, a romantic epistolary novel that will take you to the depths of the magical sea and to the limits of the imagination. So essentially, this is a book that's all written in letters, and I'm not gonna lie, I don't know how excited I am for this now, because I looked at the date on some of the letters and it's like 1003 and I'm like what was even going on during history at that time and the writing feels like old English like I don't really know how to put it but apparently it's really good so I'm willing to give it a try still so I'm definitely gonna try this one I'm very very thankful for the arc but I'm also a little bit scared because it might go over my head another book that I've never heard of before in my life but actually sounds really interesting I don't know if this is a new release or not I think this might have come out in February I have no idea it's called the Ministry of Time Can we just appreciate this fun cover and even the spine this is such a pretty arc. Already an international sensation with rights sold in 17 languages and a TV adaptation in the pipeline after a 21-way auction, The Ministry of Time is an ingeniously imagined hilarious romp through time, space, and the human heart by an exhilarating new voice in fiction. So yeah, I don't know what to expect from this book at all. It says a boy meets a girl, the past meets the future, a finger meets a trigger, the beginning meets the end, England is forever, England must fall. I'm seeing a 1847 but it looks like a very interesting combination of things but if it's funny and there's time travel count me in another book that i just got today that i was not expecting mainly because i feel like i just got the first one called expectant deliveries we have number two in this cozy mystery series called dead tired it's basically about all of these pregnant women who come together and solve mysteries in their town this one is set in a not so sleepy country english or Scottish countryside and that right there just has me sold. I mean sounds fun to me. I'm sure there's lots of jokes and great humor in this one and another book that I got from my bestie Kendall is one that I am seeing blow up everywhere and I feel like I need to go ahead and buy numbers two and three because I think the first editions are probably gonna be like sold out pretty soon and that is Spark of the Everflame. The reason Kendall sent this one to me is she had a trivia movie night on Patreon and I won so I was the winner and she picked this off my wish list. It's a romanticy and there's also politics involved. So 
Yeah, I've been seeing so many of my friends that I love and trust say that they gave this book five stars and the series is just so bingeable. So I am really excited to get to this one. And another book that I know nothing about, but I've seen rave reviews is The Bridge Kingdom by Danielle L. Jansen. Obviously I just finished Fate, Inked, and Blood and loved it enough to buy this one. I literally know nothing about it. I just know this has been compared to like Akatar. I don't know that there's actually Fae, but it is romantic -y. And if it's anything like Fate, inked and blood's writing and pace and high stakes i mean i'm here for it and this one is actually fairly short this cover is very <laughs> interesting kind of low quality art style but again it is the first run edition so i think you can actually buy this in barnes now and another very 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 exciting book that came which i wasn't really actually planning to buy this until i read the first one but i had to buy the rule book by sarah adams i love sarah adams she is one of the top romance authors i will actually read next to emily henry and abby jimenez you just cannot go wrong with the sarah adams book i think this is a book where you can like read it separately but it also follows characters from the cheat sheet. So you kind of want to read them in order. But she did put an author's note in the beginning that if you prefer to keep the bedroom door fully closed, you can skip chapter 34. That's cool that she also gives that option. But regardless, I will be reading this at some point, hopefully very, very soon. But the showstopper of this mini little book haul is one I could not wait to unbox is my second Illumicrate, and that is Fathom Folk. Oh my gosh. I don't know if this is like my favorite book I own now just because my favorite color palette is orange and blues. There's something about that color palette that just satisfies or tickles something in my brain. Like I said, I literally could not wait to open this. So I'm showing it to you guys now. This is just stunning. There's actually gold foil on the actual dust jacket itself. Oh my gosh. And look at these edges. Look at the edges, you guys. This is just... I cannot believe that. It is just so stunning and it does not stop there. You take the dust jacket off and there's this amazing dragon on the front. Y'all, like what the heck is that? It's got gold foil on the spine. The end pages are also the same on the front and the back, but look at that. Holy cow, y'all. That is just, whew absolutely stunning and of course each book comes signed so i love that she signed her name in english but also chinese because this one is chinese folklore inspired i believe i've been hearing really good things about it but i actually don't know much about it i just saw a spoiler that this was going to be the book choice and i had to get this one anything that's under the sea or mermaids or sirens or anything within that realm is just so magical to me i had an obsession with little mermaid as a child and ever since then i will just read any anything that looks and feels like this. But anyways, I have about 30 minutes before I have to jump into my Patreon sprints for the week, so I'm gonna run, and I'm definitely planning to read a lot more of Tempest of Tea tonight. And then tomorrow, I'm actually working in office, which typically I usually work in office Wednesdays, but I switch my days because we're required to go in for like a tour of some sort of like a new printer, and I actually have a photo shoot tomorrow night, and I have not shot in quite some time. I think since last year. It's just for a friend. We're gonna do some cute family spring photos so I'm very excited. So tomorrow's gonna be a long day and I probably will not check in with you but I will probably check in with you Friday when we wrap up this weekly vlog.
hello besties i'm here to close out this weekly vlog and let you know that i made it a little bit over halfway in tempest of tea this week which is not as far as i wanted to be but honestly it's far enough i still have a couple days to finish this before book club i will say i'm kind of getting a three star feeling with this one and it makes me so sad i honestly went into this not knowing there was going to be like a whole heist type scenario honestly i don't know if that's my favorite thing or if it's just the way that this author wrote it but honestly i'm way more invested in kind of like the character studies we have going on i still think felicity or flick is my favorite she has a talent to forge things and forge signatures but she also has this interesting dynamic with her mom where she's trying to prove herself she just doesn't feel like she's enough and i feel like that's totally relatable but this just feels very drawn out and very slow i feel like i finally just got to a point where there's things happening also Jin, our main male character is a hundred percent cause brecker i think he might even walk with a limp but he uses an umbrella as like a cane and then he also has burn wounds on his hands which obviously ties back to the story of his family tragically dying in a fire when he was a child i can't exactly remember what happened in six of crows but it's just like very similar almost too similar i'm enjoying this but i'm honestly not seeing much from the world building it's very much character development which isn't always necessarily my favorite i feel like i need both if i'm reading a romanticy i don't usually mind a more character development run story but when it's something like a heist and something that's supposed to be high stakes but we're just not getting that in this book i feel like it's incredibly disappointing so i'm not hating it i'm not loving it but but I will definitely be finishing it. I hope the last portion is a lot faster paced. I hope we get even more from some of the characters and their development. I do love the little budding romance that's happening in this, so we do get a very well-rounded type of young adult fantasy. But if you want to hear my thoughts or discuss with me, you can obviously check out my Patreon below or follow me on Goodreads. I will probably post my review over there. But thank you all so incredibly much for hanging out with me for another weekly vlog. I am going to skip our typical weekly vlog next week because the next video you're going to see is actually a 24 hour readathon vlog using the timer method. I've been vlogging that a little bit already and I think it's going to take me a lot longer than I thought but even though this is a little bit later I decided to call this a monthly reset vlog. I always like to get groceries, set up my journal, organize my TBR cart, all that good stuff so I hope you guys enjoyed. I love you all so incredibly much. Thank you for always being here and supporting my channel and I I will see you in my next video.